one degree rise in ocean temperatures in the waters surrounding Antarctica will attack and begin to melt the ice shelves from below very quickly. The air temperatures will stay cold enough to keep things frozen at the surface, but what we're worried about is the ice being attacked from beneath, not from above. And the cores revealed that this is what happened during the Pliocene, when global climate was warming. But they display even more change than expected, revealing not only a patchwork of glacial rubble, but also smooth mud from open seas, indicating that ice both froze and then melted many times. There's a really important change right here. This interval shows us uh, quite a dramatic change in the environment. There was ice and then there was no ice. The ice sheet has gone backwards and forwards. It's advanced and it's retreated. As they examine core after core from the Pliocene, they continue to see surprising signs of change. The results of the drilling are simply spectacular. They give us a picture of a dynamic ice sheet coming and going regularly more than 60 times. What we're seeing in this record is telling us that Antarctica is not just a benign spectator, it's a player. What this means is while it was generally warm during the Pliocene, there were also brief periods of cooling, and the ice was exquisitely sensitive to even small changes in climate. Just a few degrees could tip the scale from ice to no ice. So what's in store for our future? As Earth continues to warm, how much Antarctic ice will melt? And how high will sea levels rise? Andrel scientists turn to computer models by Rob DeCanto and Dave Pollard. We developed these climate models based on our best understanding of the physics of the climate system, and in this case, ice sheets. And now, information from Andril is added to the climate model. This is a computer model simulation of the Antarctic ice sheet over the last several million years, and covers a good chunk of the interval that was recovered by the Andril sediment core. So we're looking for the same kind of behavior in our models that we're seeing in the geological record. As the model simulates the warming periods of the Pliocene, all of the ice shelves disappear, followed by the entire West Antarctic ice sheet and edges of the east. And as temperatures change, the ice refreezes and melts again and again. And that's important because the changes in the ice sheet that we're seeing here reflect pretty significant changes in sea level. According to DeCanto's model, sea levels rose about 23 feet during the Pliocene. Temperatures back then were three to five degrees higher than now. Just what's projected to take place by the end of the century. But there's a lag time in the way ice responds that may delay the impact for hundreds, if not thousands, of years. Regardless, coastal cities all over the world would be at risk, potentially displacing millions. We would be remapping places like Boston and New York, the Bay Area, not to mention, of course, places like Louisiana, Miami, New Orleans, of course. But even that might not be the worst case scenario. Things were very similar to today in terms of our climate. Tim Nash brings Rob DeCanto to New Zealand to look at a possibility that's even more frightening. This is the first time I've seen the actual direct evidence for what the models are doing. You're seeing a deepening sea level rise up through here. We're going to look at some rocks that are the same age as rocks we've drilled in Antarctica that give us the record of global sea level changes. Here along the Rangitiki River, tectonic forces have raised the land and the river has cut into the earth to expose layer after layer of sediment that once was the sea floor. What they find are shells dated to the warming era of the Pliocene. 
These shells provide a way to chart sea level in the past, because some of these species still exist today. Many of these shells you see in here actually live today. So they live around the coastline, and we know the water depth they live in today. So by breaking them out of these rocks and identifying them, we can say the depth they were living here over three million years ago. Because these shellfish live on the sea floor and can only survive in water at specific depths, they suggest that sea levels in the Pliocene were much higher than even the computer models predict. This is really it, Rob. This is where we would say we have the evidence for sea level being up to as much as 20 metres above present. That's over 60 feet. In order for sea level to have risen that high, an enormous amount of ice must have melted. And this raises a startling possibility that a large part of the vast East Antarctic ice sheet melted along with the West. And if it melted once, could it melt again? That could be a very bad thing because that would actually produce a contribution to future sea level change that we really haven't been thinking about. This presents an even more dangerous and unpredictable picture of Antarctica. What's been surprising is even geologists thought that glaciers and ice sheets were these large static features, which we would never really see change in our lifetime. But glacial processes are no longer quite as glacial. Things are moving faster than we had thought. What's driving these changes are rising levels of greenhouse gases. In the next five years, greenhouse gas levels will be like they were in the Pliocene. But we're not just going back to the Pliocene. Some of the projections put CO2 levels at twice the concentrations of the Pliocene by the end of the next century. We're essentially going back to the time of the dinosaurs when there was very little ice on the planet and there were forests covering Antarctica. And signs of change are already here. Scientists were completely caught by surprise when in 2002, the Larsen ice shelf shattered apart without warning in just a few weeks. And today, the Wilkins ice shelf, a block of ice approximately the size of Connecticut, barely hangs on. I would say it's inevitable that West Antarctica will disappear. How long it will take East Antarctica to engage is something that's, that's not yet known. In the coming years, the Andro team will continue to explore Antarctica's climate history in order to gain valuable insight into Earth's future. With each new core, we gain new knowledge about a continent that's always been shrouded in mystery. But its fate remains very much tied to our own. <laughs>